She was christened St. Lucia in 1492. Her sobriquet is the Helen of the West. Out of over 7,000 islands which dot the Caribbean Sea, she was the most prized little rock in the Western Hemisphere. Helen was battled over 14 times during the 17th and 18th centuries by England and France. At one point, this island was considered so valuable that the British and French were willing to trade all of Canada for St. Lucia. Helen was prized as much for her strategic location as for her stunning beauty. For the British, she acted as a military buffer to protect Barbados. And for the French, she offered the same kind of protection for Martinique against the English. The battles to win her over fertilized the French language and culture while allowing many English customs, laws and traditions which have flavored her children even today. For over 100 years after emancipation, sugar remained the dominant crop and agriculture the leading industry. By 1951, when all citizens became eligible to vote, leaders emerged from the working class. George Charles led the labor movement to become St. Lucia's first chief minister. By 1964, the baton was passed on to a young UK trained barrister would go on to rewrite Caribbean history while leading his people out of the darkness by the light of the torch. John George Melvin Compton steered St. Lucia from colonialization to statehood in 1967. Compton, along with a dedicated band of brothers, led the march to independence, but this was fraught with resistance from the mother country and well-orchestrated protest by hopeful politicians and St. Lucians who were unsure of the ramifications of independence. Steadfast and proud, the declaration was waived on the night of February 22, 1979. And with that, St. Lucia, the Helen of the West, took her place as an independent nation. 1979 was a monumentous year in other respects as well. William Arthur Lewis, a St. Lucia national, made intellectual history by becoming the first person in the Caribbean to be awarded the Nobel Prize in economics for his thesis, Industrialization by Invitation. The core idea was for Caribbean governments to encourage multinational corporations to establish enterprises in the region by providing suitable physical plants equipped with utilities, thus stimulating new investment, reducing unemployment, and promoting greater land utilization. Today, this concept continues to be effectively employed to attract foreign direct investment. In 1980, before we could fully appreciate what independence meant, Mother Nature sent Hurricane Allen. Thousands of houses were destroyed, six people perished, and Helen was now in $235 million of debt. Obstacles, of course, are developmental necessities. Within weeks, schools were back on track. Businesses, bridges, and our banana industry bounced back with a significant increase in exports. With the influx of foreign exchange came new schools, upgrades to our hospitals, greater investment in sporting facilities, and three brand new beautiful buildings. By 1990, tourism was a buzzword with thousands of visitors landing on our shores. By then, the population stood at 145,000 people. 
by 1990, the telecommunications sector was making waves while the St. Lucia Electricity Services invested and expanded with a long-term vision. By 1992, St. Lucia was moving swiftly into universal secondary education. And just then, the poet, playwright and professor who grew up here in Lesleyland was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature for his book, Omeros. But there have been many more like Derek over the years, like the paintbrush brandishing band of brothers who today are living up to the legacy of their father, Sir Dunstan Sentoma, who designed the St. Lucia flag and is dubbed the Michelangelo of the Caribbean. There are rising stars like the poet Vladimir Lucien and young innovators like Joanne and Dujon who are using technology to put us on the map. And of course, Darren Sammy, fabulous innings, last time out. This man has been batting and bowling St. Lucia's name into cricket history, while his contemporary, Laverne Spencer, has been raising the bar for young females in sport. Our nation is grooming bright sparks like Dion Rekai, the Mathways, and Kishon Alphonse, the court's regional reading champion, while Ronald Bohinkson has been delivering true tones for nearly 50 years, alongside maestros like Marvel Day, Teddy St. John, Ricky T, and Shane Ross isn't too far behind. Industry and commerce today is the strongest it's ever been. Viking Traders, the little company that could, has been producing quality seasonings for over 38 years for the local and international market. Sugar Beach, Cap Mezzo and Sandals have all been winning international awards for their quality of product and service. So too is Fordu Plantation, which is blazing a trail in providing an authentic traditional St. Lucian experience. There are hotels, then there's this. Its owners and marketing strategy continue to wow the world and make St. Lucia the mecca for high-end clientele in the tourism sector. The global financial crisis of 2007-2008 tested St. Lucia like many other countries. And it was a difficult time for the island. A strong, stable government, supported by a strong banking sector, and a resilient workforce enabled us to weather the tide and we came out on the black side of the balance sheet with lessons well learned. 2011 and 2016 saw peaceful transitions of power under the guidance of the longest serving Governor General in the Commonwealth, Dame Perlet Louisi, a testament to our stable democracy. As our skylines become dotted with large infrastructural projects which provide thousands of jobs, Mother Nature always reminds us that she is there to test our preparedness and response. October 30th, 2011, Hurricane Thomas stole 14 lives and caused $588 million worth of damage. Within 24 hours, the roads and airports were reopened thus reducing the potential economic loss. There was also the Christmas Eve trough in 2013, which drenched us with over 171 milliliters of rain and set us back almost $100 million. Our government, our foreign allies, our neighbors, and most importantly, our people all stepped up and played their part in our economic and social recovery. And today, although the scars may be visible, our hearts are healed. In 2017, John Compton's Quadrant Economic Development Plan for St. Lucia is being pursued using Sir Arthur Lewis's thesis of industrialization by invitation. Port Castries is set for a timely and substantial redevelopment project. Two state-of-the-art hospitals will soon be commissioned. Banana exports are on the rise, thanks to a new deal brokered with the French government. Sir Arthur Lewis would be proud, knowing that his formula has secured the single largest foreign direct investment project in the Eastern Caribbean, which is happening here and now. 
on the most coveted little gem in the Western Hemisphere. St. Lucia, 238 square miles of tropical 